Prepare yourself for a sprawling discussion on just about anything, where critical thinking meets pop culture in a collision of mind-bending proportions. Please secure all neurons and prepare for full frontal cortex. It's time for Incoherent Ramblings. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Incoherent Ramblings. I'm your host, Joey Shem. We also got Paul Huttinger, Gail Anderson, Daryl George, and we are at episode 02R028, and today... No, no R in there. R028. R028. It's the pirate episode. Arr. I mateys. I, and we're going to be talking about altruism. Altruism. <laughs> yeah. It just sound like we're... Now that's when we don't have oranges. We're on A. No, that's scurvy. Arr. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Uh, all right, so we're going to be talking about that today. Uh, we are our uh, sponsor. Our sponsor today R's. is Pirate Jesus. Uh, wait. No, is thumbs up, Jesus. Thumbs up, Jesus. Thumbs up, thumbs up Jesus. Jesus. But we'll make him look like a pirate. Thumbs no, up, not, Je- not his butt. <laughs> Thumb butt. His butt pirate Jesus. Oh, we're going to hell. All right, thumbs up, Edward Jesus. This isn't hell. <laughs> not yet. The swamp ass That's hasn't kicked in. So, uh, thumbs up Jesus, which is uh, Jesus holding his thumb up. <laughs> wow, look at him right here. Isn't he cool? Yeah, well, I am Jesus. Jesus. I am we really, we really have him here. I didn't just see a picture what a, online. What a cool sculpt he is. Yes, yes, he is. So, uh, today we're going to be talking about altruism, uh, which is, does it exist? Uh, for those who don't know, altruism means you, you really are doing something nice just to be nice. Does it exist? Does it not exist? What would Linda say? What does Linda say? I say there is altruism in some people. There, there thank you. you. That was a, that was All a right, well, we can end the episode now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, you voice. You can reach us at show. <laughs> thank you, voice of woman. Yeah, we oh, well yeah. yeah. Email is show at iamrambling.com or put our name in front We're of We're not that. really uh, expecting to hear from you, but we say it anyway. Yeah, because, you know, <laughs> cool. creatures right. of habit. Okay, let's get to the pre-ramble. Re- pre-ramble. Pre-ramble. <laughs> So today's pre-ramble is going to be some news I just heard. Wanted to hear what you guys thought about uh, a baby praying. Well, I think that it really creates peace and unity. <laughs> no, wait, that's not it. Uh, Linda's a family. Showing some paper. No, uh, our uh, pre-ramble today <laughs> is, is the news of Voyager 1 has left the solar system. It is official dun, dun, today. V'ger? V'ger, yes, V'ger. <laughs> Uh, Star Trek. Okay, who reference. determined where the edge of the solar oh, that's, system yeah. is? Though? That's much better. There, there. There's here. thumbs up, Jesus. Yes. Well, this is a serious question Jesus. because the thing yeah, what is, is the edge of the solar system? They, yeah, the I edge mean, of the. Do they use a yardstick? No, the edge of the whole solar system is the heliosphere, which has two things. Number one, uh, it's where the uh, solar wind stops and the galactic wind begins. Define stops. Uh, I'll get to that. Okay, and. The magnetic force was supposed to be less, but they're not really sure if that's true anymore because it didn't drop so down. Is it more of a guess? Best estimate? It's a guesstimate. I it, thought it I only left like, a long time ago, like mm-hmm. years ago. No, but but there's it such a like there's it. such it just a, felt like. I, I would expect there's such a gradient. It's a lot like saying something left the atmosphere. There is an official still have a thin <laughs> veneer of material. There is an official definition of particles. Uh, yeah. Let me bring it up real quick. I'm glad Joey was prepared for this. Yeah. I, I, well, I didn't know you were going to freaking real, grill me on it, Daryl. I got you there. <laughs> it's not our episode. It's, it's the freaking pre-ramble. pre-ramble. Joey has to see it. Yeah, yeah, so. How did they get the information? Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, it actually more. left like weeks Fine. ago. Here we go. It a while for the message. To yeah. Be yeah, it, that's true. Uh, uh, I'm sure they would account for the delay. The interstellar medium. Again, how do they know? It dude, I'm answering a question. Since the last ping. The interstellar ping. medium, the density of electrons, is thought to be between 0.05 and 0.22 cubic centimeters uh, outside the solar system. The particles were at 0.08 dude, TMI, last year, dude. then 0.06. You asked, <laughs> and <laughs> that's freaky. Don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Musical interlude while Joey looks up something. Yeah. <laughs> Let's play spoons over it there. Just felt, it just felt like, uh, you know, appropriate at the moment. Okay, I'm not looking, I'm not looking it up anymore. I'm trying to talk. Yeah! All right. So, so because now of the altruism. particle density, they believe it's outside of the solar system. 
Or the heliosphere. A heliosphere, the which they're counting. So as that is its density. But they're saying... It's th- well, density. actually, the thing that uh, that uh, would actually... You set- are my density. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you did it. You are my density. density. What? I'm, I mean, my destiny. Oh. oh. Hey, McFly! <laughs> oh. But hey, Dad, da- Daddy-o. So, okay, but here's the last thing I'm going to say about it. Actually, the thing that measures the solar particles on Voyage 1 broke in the 80s. <laughs> so, they're actually doing it by density of the waves around it. So, they're not incredibly sure. Voyager 2 works and should be there in a few so years. So, it's just way the hell out there. Basically, they're saying that the edge of the solar system is like, if you're in an air-conditioned room, and then there's like another room that <laughs> doesn't have an air ass. conditioner, but it's open to the other room, and then there's the far room, which is outside where it's hot, the Voyager's in that middle room where it's ah. a little bit, but it's enough to say that it's mostly out of the main that's, room. That's a multiple right. room analogy. Yes, yeah. it is. So, what do you guys think of now that I have explained well, it? So is that is that with central air? Those like walls are air? way the hell out there. See, I was I was trying to get your opinions on the whole <laughs> first thing to leave the solar system. We're about. Well, but, I, I think well, it's I, I think think as soon as it the next room disappears, how far is it to the next? It will go in, It'll sphere. go into the the. That is a big part of the universe that actually, where the real family. universe is. Actually, yeah. actually, it says, some people say it's not out of the solar system because there are still far out comets that orbit the sun, which go beyond this. Mm-hmm. And it will exit from then, their orbit, in 30,000 years. Yeah, but that would be a little farther away to, you know, report I guess on. I another point is that the thing is definitely at exit velocity. It's not going to get caught in an orbit around the sun. Uh, and it's nice to know, too, that a man-made object is now... We finally left the solar system. Thank you, Paul. We a man-made object system. left the room. Yes. <laughs> All right. Daryl, Daryl, cool guess thing. what? Next week, you're doing the free ramble. <laughs> That's right. right. You better be ready for it. <laughs> All right. So that. we have left the solar system. And we, we left this free ramble. The frontier. Thank you. And we left the free ramble. And we left the free ramble. That's your cue. <laughs> Are we ever gonna actually come up with like a really recorded song? For no. That? All right. No. No. All right. No. It changes every week. <laughs> All right. Altruism. The definition of altruism uh, is from my mind. <laughs> I'm not looking up anything right now. Is being nice to Maybe people. Maybe if someone's uh, kind to you, they'll look it up for you. Yes. Yeah. Well, isn't it the? Uh, ah. Oh, <laughs> benefiting uh, others without expecting. expecting anything in return. Right. It's and uh, it includes true doing, selflessness. Doing something selfless. selflessness. Right. Because you know I could do something for you, um, even if I'm not expecting something in return. It it could still be kind of a selfish thing. Like, I, I this, what's a good example of that? The like you could you could like you can like give me a gift. Right, but it makes you feel good because I like it so much, and everyone else likes it. And it's like, hey, Daryl, man, nice job. That's With an that. Int- if that if giving you the gift you. made me feel made good, you then feel that's good. That's an intrinsic benefit. Of the, yeah, the the, the official uh, definition, the belief or that in the practice of disinterested or selfless concern for the well being of others. So you might think, why is that worth a podcast episode? Well, because it's a philosophical type Daryl said so. discussion. I, I just thought of a good way to illustrate it. Like if Joey were annoying all of us, <laughs> that never happens. That <laughs> never happens. That's not too hard to imagine, really. Like if I removed him <laughs> from the room, <laughs> then I, you know, that's not completely altruistic because I did it for myself, and it happened to benefit you guys. Right. Yes. But then, like know, Optimus Prime sacrifice. But then it, the thing is, like, if if you're the only one who's annoyed by Joey, and I proceed to remove him from the room, not expecting anything in return, then in that unlikely scenario, since Joey would obviously be annoying me too, but if that were <laughs> hypothetically true, <laughs> I'm in the room, Daryl. <laughs> I'm right well, here. Anymore, we just removed <laughs> you. <laughs> so you <yeah. laughs> So if I were honestly expecting nothing in return, then. That would be altruism. So, and the idea behind altruism, uh, why we're talking about it, is because uh, it may not actually exist in, if you look at it. In purest form. In a pure form. Yeah, it's good, Paul. In pure form. So, let's start talking. It's been too long since we beat up on Joey. I yeah. You guys are supposed to do the same. No, no, I listened to a few early episodes, and I'm like, I missed that kind of... <laughs> 
I miss uh, that I, trashing I, of the Joey. I, 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 I don't. Okay. Uh, the trashing of his pouch. To you. That's going to be the next week's pre-ramp. Did you watch yeah. Looper? Trashing <laughs> Joey. Jeez. Were we supposed to watch Looper again? No. Oh, oh yeah. Just, just one way I watched one. the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> You had an excuse for that, though. Okay, right, so um, let's let's talk about the feel-good idea. Well, let's talk about the whole idea that maybe altruism doesn't exist because even if you're doing something selfless, you still are doing it to get a good feeling, right? There, <laughs> I could benefit your own health. I'd say that in, in the example we're kind of talking about, that if someone, if there's something that actually damages you, and yet, you do it for them. That would be more altruistic than right. if it didn't. But benefit. here's my. Well, but you're still. But your ego is still getting like the hero complex of doing that. You're still getting the the feel good that you're doing something for the betterment of. But there are other Monty aspects. Monty disagreed we're going, with that. There are other aspects <laughs> we're going to explore further, like kinship, and mm -hmm. um, we're going to talk about the selfish gene later, but. The thing is that you can wind up um, doing something completely selfless, like sacrificing your life to save your kin. And in that kind of situation, yes, you gave up something, but you're actually fighting for your representation in the gene pool. Well, it's kind of like, I, I will throw myself in the mouth of the volcano to appease some god versus having everyone I know and is related to me wiped off the face of the earth. Right? That would be altruistic to sacrifice yourself under those conditions but it also preserves your representation in the gene pool. Well, see, and I think that ad, that expands not just to your family, but I think that when I think about humanity, I think that I would do altruistic things to advance humanity. Mm -hmm. Well, let's bring it back to kind of a... a they, humanity adv advancing also makes your yeah, life. Right, yeah, exactly. Well, why would I let the guy cut in front of me in traffic? Because he wants to cut in. There's no benefit for me. Because then might you don't feel like a your douche. Car if you don't, <laughs> you I don't feel like a douche. Go. Okay, <laughs> let me, let me, hold on, let me bring up this argument, okay? There's all over the room. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So does that make it a clean room or a dirty room? <laughs> <laughs> or both? Yeah. It's Probably. a freshly showered room. Anyway, okay, here's, ahead, here's this argument. Go ahead and try anything. I believe, or I, this is how I believe, that... If you are truly altruistic, it may exist, but if you are truly altruistic, you are illogical because mm. you are doing something you don't want to do. I think the only way you could truly do something that is altruistic is if there's absolutely no benefit. So you have to take the opposite view that you're doing something you don't want to do. And if you're choosing to do something you, your mind says you don't want to do, you're got a problem with your mind because you're doing something you don't want to do. If I right. choose to do something like let someone cut in front of me, I chose to do it because for whatever reason, I thought it was best. I thought it was best in some way because it made me feel good, because I thought it would uh, be better for the person, be better for traffic, be better for society, well, whatever. because it was a nice well, thing to do. When Linda said this before um, the other day, she, we were talking about this, and I said that it's basically her view, belief in kind of karma. So right. ultimately, she is expecting it to come back to her. Right, right. I, and I think that if you really analyze things, and most people, if you're really honest with yourselves, you're going to realize that you may be thinking in a moment that I'm going to do something nice and I'm not expecting something in return. But I think most people have a philosophy, whether or not it's religious, that you will be repaid in kind somewhere down the line. And what is it that, um, you know, the Bible says that, if you give something away, it'll come back to you tenfold. And no, if that... it comes back, shoot it. Huh? That's not the Bible. Oh, that's not the Bible. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, that's The Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know where that came from, but all right. But the thing no, is that it's, it, the, there's this general concept of you can give selflessly and of your own good heart and everything, but we still always have this kind of ingrained sense of justice that... If we do well by others, we will be repaid at somewhere down the line. And I think that that encourages people to be selfless, which is a good thing, good thing in yeah. itself. But it's also 
not true altruism because true altruism would not have an eye toward the future and an eventual payoff. But I even want to bring it down to something more specific, which is maybe not even an, a, a, an eye to the something later. Like you may actually be doing something, and you may let's just say that there is there's you have. Even on a subconscious level, you don't think you're going to get paid back. Maybe you're going to die the next day or something like that. And you do something you feel is completely selfless. The thing is, I'm trying to, it's clear in my head, but it's hard to describe. It. You're doing it, and the things that we do, we do because biologically, when we do them, we get rewarded. I mean, that's pretty much how the brain works. It's how our whole biological system works. And we is release a little dopamine. Exactly. It, and that, that's exactly where I was going. It's, I get high. It's dopamine. Yeah. It's that our, on, on a, a biological so level, we want dopamine, and it's released in certain ways. And one of the ways it may be released in people who are very nice is they get a larger surge of dopamine or something similar. They get some sort of reward by being nice. Right. Because if you're being nice and you don't want to be nice, then maybe you're altruistic. I, 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 well, it just, it's, altruism is in my head, in my mind, is illogical. And I can understand if you know a lot of listeners are thinking we're all being very cynical. But I'm just trying to present something realistic, and I think you are too, Joey. That whether or not you're acting truly selflessly, there are benefits to being altruistic. Yeah, and, and, and there, are, that, there are things yeah. that explain the, yeah. the self-esteem. In what Joey was saying, even that uh, is, you're being nice to somebody because you are anticipating this hassle that is going to happen if you're not nice. And I and, think we need to look at it also as, like we did last week, or last episode, with the uh, free will, is that on, on the whole... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Preparation H yeah, does feel good on the whole. That, that's the what, what went in my head. And, uh, so. Well, see, I realized now that that I was telling that joke about... Oh, that's right. People at home can't see me face palm. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. If you, let, if you uh, love something, set it free. If it doesn't come back, hunt it down and shoot it. Oh, that's yeah, what the joke is. Okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> if it comes back, shoot it. That's, that's not that a good way to find right. love, my friend. Okay, so <laughs> unless you, that whole unless idea... You want a whole Woman. Kale's that whole idea which we put to bed a while ago came back. Should we shoot you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, According to what I said, I guess so. But uh, what we were talking about free will is one of those things where whether we have free will or not, it's a good thing we, f- we think we have free will. And I think it comes down to the same thing here. Whether altruism exists or not on this level that we have, uh, it's, a f- it's a philosophy discussion. It doesn't have any bearing yeah. in real life because even if, if altruism doesn't really exist and it's all because we're trying to get dopamine or rewarded or feel good inside or whatever, it still, on the surface, has the appearance of what we call being a good person. Maybe a way to keep it. Yeah, it's not being, a bad thing. We got to say we're not, we're not we're not saying that being selflessness is can ex, cannot exist at all. The uh, and it, so the illusion I'm of just going to hold my peace. So the illusion. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Daryl, put that away! Not, not, oh my that. God! <laughs> so the illusion of uh, the illusion of selflessness, though it may though selflessness may not exist, is still a thing which is Daryl is holding. Go ahead, Daryl. Um, just to mitigate the cynicism of it all, um, I'm not going God, to contest do that. that intentions of altruism don't exist because I believe they do. Oh, that there good. are definitely mm-hmm. people who want to be altruistic, aren't thinking directly about any sort of benefit they're going right. to get. Right, yes. The fact there are benefits there probably steers people toward altruism a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I, I think the intention is definitely there in many people. And even though the intention might be biologically motivated for reward or, mm-hmm. or some something that your body is doing to, you know, for you, you may not be looking at it that way, and that's why you feel that it's selfless, which... On some level, it is. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that human nature is not quite at a point where we would naturally be selfless or exhibit altruism, pure, what we, we've talked about as pure altruism, because people basically do what benefits themselves uh, as long as it doesn't hurt anybody else. And I actually, now back to the cynicism. Well, yeah, and I, I actually think, no, but I actually think the true altru- altru- altruism could actually, if it did exist, or it's just, it's such a, it's such a illogical way of looking at things. You're, you're basically doing something you don't want to do. 
I almost, is the only way I can see altruism. I almost think that um, the idea of a purity and altruism almost exists on the same level as like religion would view the person who is without sin. It's like this imaginary ideal that you can strive for. Yeah, yeah. Plato's yeah. for. But no one's perfect enough to achieve it. And mm-hmm. and but then it comes back to me. We're saying if you were perfect enough to achieve it, I mean, try to think of an example where it, you're really being altruistic. You have to be doing something which has no reward for you, even on a biological level, none. So it has to be something you don't want to do at all. Zero expectations. Zero. Something you don't want to do. Right. And as a society, most of us have the feel good when we do something nice. So it can't be something nice unless you're like a psychopath that's missing that part of your brain. So that means that for most of us to be altruistic, we have to do something that's not nice, actually doing something wrong that we don't have any say in. We don't, I mean, I'm trying to think of an actual example of that. Where there, there might be, you might be able to construct situations where even doing, um, the nice thing doesn't feel right. So, but, but maybe maybe the um, that's sadism. The, there's this oh, mm. interesting. Have you heard but of? But then you're say. No, oh, go ahead, Daryl. Well, have you heard of the dilemma about? Um, say, there's like an out of control um, rail car at a station, and you see ten people down the tracks are. Oh, this is great. This, yes, right? I know this one. Go ahead, Darryl. So the it. thing is, you can basically pull a lever to divert it to a different track where it's only going to run over one person, right? Now, that might be the altruistic thing to do. Pull the lever and make sure only one person dies versus the ten. However, would you feel good about that? Because you still influence something. Wait, like do you know the next part, though? And then yeah, the, next part is, the next part is even better. There's the, next, uh, the other version of it. There's there are the same ten people down the tracks uh, going to get creamed by this car, but there's no switch this time. And instead, there's a very obese gentleman who's standing by the tracks, and you realize if you push him in front of the out-of-control car it'll kill just him and stop the car and save the other 10. Most people will actually change their answer. Most people would select, I want to pull the lever to save the 10 people by switching the car to a different track that is just one person. But when you're directly involved in shoving someone in front of the you car, be your answer usually changes. Most people will now have a real dilemma on their hands. Because it I becomes personal. Yeah. Kill the one guy personally yeah. versus I, having the 10 just get hit by an out of control I think thing that too, was not your fault. It would change right? too as we were, uh, as we were reading about um, kinship and how that changes your... Your outcome. If the, what if that one person was your son? Yeah, exactly. or someone. You got ten yeah, yeah. strangers exactly. and your one son. Yeah, and, and it comes, and that's a good point because then you bring an altruism to a place where it's not just black or white. It's Ooh, somewhere okay. in the middle. That's a really good illustration, actually, of the point I was trying to make. Uh-huh. Like, you have a choice between. It's almost like the um, choice uh, Spider-Man has, where he can save the trolley full of people or save Mary Jane, right? Yeah, uh, Spock. What? Good of the one outweighs the good of the many. <laughs> Star Trek Two, or three, the few, four. or the few. Oh, it's few. Thank you. Or the few. Yeah. No, well, or the one. No, that was it. And and the few. Okay, but yeah. So so the idea is okay. You save someone who's your kin. That's an altruistic thing to do for them, at, because you had to expend many lives to do. It was that. a bus full of kids. You a bus full of kids. It wasn't a trolley full of people. Oh, it was a school kids. <laughs> it was. Remember, because right. he says, he says, oh, we're, suffer we're the spoil- children. We're spoiling yeah. the movie, by the way, but that's all right. <laughs> Everyone saw that one, I'm sure. So the thing is... Um, the kids die. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Joey. <laughs> so the thing Spoiler. is, that would, be, that would be altruistic in terms of saving your kin, but uh, you would probably feel horrible in that situation, given the sacrifice. Well, wait, wait, wait. Now, right. wouldn't it be altruistic then saving it- the... The group? Wouldn't it be more that altruistic be, to save the group? You see, people? like, each choice is altruistic in some way. Because yeah. you're still going to have a lot. If you you could only save those people if you then that's right. yourself in front of no, the No, you're train. right. It's more selfish to yeah, save that's the one person who's important right. to you. Right. Or... I, think would, I agree. You'd, you'd, you'd stop so it yourself. So it's, it's more altruistic to save the group. Or what if it's right. the ten strangers that you don't know, and the one guy is... So you would still feel bad about that, because you're like, this person I love died because of my altruistic... Selfless. No, you take yourself out. Venture. Take yourself out. You stop it, and then everyone dies. No. Okay. <laughs> how about this it. one? There's ten kids on the track. You can save ten kids by killing the one, the, the terrorist, bad guy. So no problem, right? Mm-hmm. But he's the only one who has the code to stop the nuclear bomb, which is going to destroy the whole city. 
And on tonight's 24. <laughs> 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 what do you do? Well, you want to kill, you want to, you want to I'm in a very deep, dark tunnel and my cell phone actually works. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, the, the thing off the bat would be save the kids, but if you save the kids, you kill the city. And that's a bad I example. I say they kill the experimenter and then you don't have to make the decision. Yeah, that's a good point. These are stupid experiments. <laughs> <laughs> so... As you can see, altruism has a lot of levels to it that go far beyond uh, just the simple, am I being nice or, or selfish or am I being selfless? Because then we can even look into the idea of evil. So the idea of someone who's evil is somebody who is completely selfish. Is it an evil, evil altruist? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's my new screen name, evil altruist. <laughs> nice. Uh, but yeah, that's... Uh, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, uh, so yeah, evil. What is it? If so, if altruism does exist, then evil probably well, exists because it would be the opposite. I prefer to say good and bad because evil usually is a connotation that it's religious or has a religious basis. But even with the problem with good, I think even good and bad is difficult because I think we have to come down to what is good and what is bad. And I think our... No, that's fine. What's but I think evil I, means that there's a God. Okay, okay. Well, all, then let's go good and bad. moralistic... Well, that's what I'm saying. Giving it some definition, I think we have to go down to some. Good basically means selfless, yeah. more selfless, and bad basically means more selfish. selfish. Right. When you look at the basic characters in any story, uh, you're looking at that uh, that idea. It's just it's if the good person is giving more of him or herself. That's yeah, the, the hero. The typical. You know, mustache curling villain is is all about you know I want it all for mine. The world's gonna be mine. If you and, <laughs> well, you know what? If you've ever seen uh, Megamind, that's such a good movie where <laughs> oh yeah, where he yeah. finally gets what he wants and right. he doesn't want it anymore because it's not really that great. He he loved the battle. You know, the, it's always right. about the journey, isn't and, it? And I think that's an excellent. And you know yeah. what, Kale, It's an excellent point. I mean, it's not really about good or evil or altruistic or not altruistic. It's about the journey along the way and making choices on that spectrum, I think. Or and then a perceived typical, choices. A typical hero's journey is going to be the reluctant hero who has to step right. up and sacrifice to prevent the the oncoming doom. Yeah. yeah. Doom. Or in Spider-Man's yeah. case, Dr. Doom. That would be the fantastic. Uh, well, he was in some. Uh, Doc Ock. Doctor Octopus. Doctor Octopus. Yeah. yeah. Why do all Doc these Oc. villains have advanced PhDs? degrees? They, yes, they're. Where would they go? That's that's from, that's actually from Big Bang. Definitely a villain oh, doctorate they? program. <laughs> yeah. <somewhere>. Villain doctorate. <laughs> okay. So uh, self proclaimed. Let's move on. Let's let's move on to the selfish gene because you started me. to bring this. <laughs> you started to bring up the idea of the selfish gene, and uh, it, it kind of does play a part here when we're looking at. Uh, being selfless on a long term because if I was to look at one thing that I think is mostly altruistic for me it would be sacrificing my life because I'm someone who doesn't really believe very much in an afterlife mm -hmm. and I feel more or less that when you're gone you're gone yeah. and that this is what you got and I like life so right. for me Life's good. giving up my life that is probably, or for I think for anyone who feels as I do, I, th I find that the most altruistic thing that you I think a person can do. I agree with that. I think that an atheist yeah. would be more altruistic to yes. give up his life right. than yes. the religious person. So, But, but there's also <laughs> a point where... But the thing is, though, if you're you still have the doing it for a reason. If you have the comfort of thinking that you're going to a cushy afterlife, then you might be more willing to drop yourself on that sword. That's what, what that's, what, that's what he oh, that's what you're that's saying. You're still that's what I'm at. saying. I thought you said an atheist would be... More altruistic because more. he's being more uh, selfless. Because they're being more selfless. Right, because they get to go to an afterlife. Not, not more likely to be altruistic, right. but yeah. more, right. more uh, selfless. Right, I exactly. That's okay. what I was saying. And so, Understood. Yeah, so, so Daryl, but you were saying how someone who sacrifices themselves, the, the gene, mm -hmm. you mentioned that earlier. Can you go over that again? Okay, well, the um, selfish gene uh, written by Richard Dawkins, um, one of the first things to get out of the way Wait, is the that's title. Wait, is that the guy who did Family Feud? <laughs> Richard Dawson. Oh, oh okay. yeah, from Dawson's Creek. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, all right. Just... Oh, okay. hey, 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 Richard Dawkins. <laughs> hey, Miss, come over here. Let me get a kiss. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> or so, as he would have named it, the immortal gene. Right. Because um, the like word the word selfish does kind of tarnish the idea in a way. It, it kind of imbues the genes with their own willpower. Like the gene's going to choose to be selfish or whatever. But the idea that he brought forward is that. 
um, successful genes are the ones that perpetuate themselves. And he found through I would say because they advertise study, themselves better. Advertise themselves better. Because they network better on LinkedIn. Is that why? The genes. <laughs> the genes. Okay. And so they Skinny basically... Um, you know, this has become my interrupt Daryl episode. <laughs> Usually it's me interrupting Joey, but it's, this time it's interrupt Daryl. You don't have a lock on that, by the way. Oh. I think everybody, <laughs> everybody <laughs> interrupts you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I get for being the most long-winded of the bunch. <laughs> I just bloviate all over the place. Ew! Oh, <laughs> dude. That sounded sticky. So, um, the idea is that the most successful genes are the ones that will propagate themselves. So, genes that um, do well spreading amongst the community and looking after each other are the ones that are going to be more successfully pushed ahead, from generation ahead, Paul, to generation. Go ahead. Say <laughs> so, something. So the idea of someone sacrificing themselves for their kin is actually beneficial to the that to the gene, gene to the progressing gene in the yeah. gene pool. So it's not necessarily the genes affect your will, et cetera. It's just that the genes that are going to give you a propensity to, to do that nurture your kin and be close to your community those are the genes that are going to prosper more because more of your genetics are going to be distributed throughout the gene pool than if you were just, um, you know, the, the villain we were talking about earlier who's only looking out for themselves. That kind of gene is going to eventually die off because they're, they're, they don't have a support structure around them. Look at it, if you want to look at it in a simplified way, what if all of a sudden every parent in the world had a choice to either kill themselves or, or the, either you, they were going to die or they could sacrifice themselves and their kids could live. Um, or if they want to live, it's their choice. Their kids are going to die. Well, all the guys who said, I want to live now have no prodigy and their genes do not go on as opposed to the ones who sacrifice themselves, their kids go on. And, and the it genes becomes survive. kind of an yeah. odds game. So yeah. the people who, who have the g genetic makeup, that they socialize more with their youngsters and everything, they're going to be the ones that are going to be more protective. And therefore, more of those youngsters are going to grow up healthy. I love the idea on the selfish gene, that the selfish gene, even though it makes it feel like it's an intelligent thing and the gene's not necessarily intelligent like that, I love the idea that it's just kind of using us, you know, to get yeah. the, to propagate yeah. throughout. The, and sitting up there in his the little old, chair. Yeah, exactly. Well, not, well, not <laughs> even like that. The, the term using us yeah. kind of makes it sound like the genes have their own will. What it's if, just a matter yeah. of like math. But what you know, if? The genes that have those properties are going to be more likely to propagate. Imagine an intelligence that isn't uh, in the moment like our intelligence is, but is spread through time. So an, a linear time intelligence that starts off from the first gene and goes throughout that dimension. Well, I, that, always, I always have problems with, with any, any inanimate object well, but or, that's what, or something having a, a will. What I'm saying is if you could step out of the timeline and see mm. the time and you could follow a gene's path, it would be so complicated that its path would make up an intelligence over that time. Okay, I'm getting off topic. It, yeah, okay. It makes sense to me. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Excellent. Anyway. Uh, Drive happy. Because <laughs> now we're getting into selfish gene. So anyway, uh, <laughs> back to what Daryl said. Daryl, please take us back there because... I it took us off track, sorry. I don't know. I kind of just <laughs> think I expanded what was there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess we're done. So, Paul, yeah. what do you think about that? Yay. <laughs> Here it is. Paul? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Daryl. Well, what were you going to say anyway, Paul? Do you was, remember? Was, he was just talking about, about jeans that, and... and well, every time somebody and, says jeans, I'm okay, thinking, I'm thinking what jeans, jeans like what Daryl was wearing. going to make your last joke. Yeah. I think we should all talk at the same time. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Go. Okay, what about cooperative game theory, Daryl? Tell us about that, because that's, uh, that's interesting. Alrighty then. So there's kind of a game that, that was designed to be a simple model for um, deciding about, on a one-to-one -one basis, um, it's called two, Pong. two players <laughs> can simultaneously decide if they want to cooperate or defect. Okay. Cooperation a simple thing that means, gets complicated very fast. Yeah, it kind of does. But there are four <laughs> options, basically. Like, both cooperate, both defect, or... This is a computer game. Or... No. Or is no, it it's a game that can be played... Like, the first studies that was done with it was just people who okay. would choose. And then um, it did become Brad a thing where they had, had to be there. They had computers uh, <laughs> run, like, an algorithm... Yeah, ten bucks. ...to yeah. try to find a good strategy in the game. Um... 
So the other two choices besides both cooperating and both defecting is that uh, player one could cooperate and the other defects, and then player two defects. Or sorry, player one defects and the other player cooperates. Um, and then there's a matrix of scoring. Okay, If both players cooperate, they uh, basically get deducted two points. I don't know why. I guess you start with a certain number of points, and once you're out of points, you're done. That kind of thing. It's like playing magic. You're like, I hit them for three. That kind of thing. Your so if you both cooperate, no, no. this the most. There's, it's the least damaging to the two of you because you both get a minus two. Um, if uh, you cooperate and your opponent defects, then basically, um, since you're cooperating, and they're defecting. They're only going to be. They're going to get the benefit of it. They're only going to be deducted one point. You're going to be deducted four points. That's the worst case scenario for you. In real life, they're called con men. Kind of like, and then if you defect and the other person cooperates, then that's your advantage. You're only going to be deducted one point. The opponent is going to be deducted four. If I cooperate, will these instructions get simpler? <laughs> yes. No. And then if you both defect, <laughs> if you both defect, it's the most mutually destructive. You're both going to get a negative three. Okay. okay. Now, let me um, try to illustrate it as like a model of nature. This, Good just luck. say that there are two <laughs> squirrels that need to collect acorns for for the winter, okay? So if they basically both decide to cooperate, <laughs> if they both cooperate their efforts, they're going to... They both get nuts. There are acorns. Oh. Acorns are nuts. We'll, say, we'll just say acorns. Acorn well, acorns okay. are not true nuts, are they? You know what? Let's say nuts. It's more fun. Okay. Are they a fruit? <laughs> hmm. So what we a could seed, say is that um, oh. it would be the best mutual thing if both are cooperating, because that basically That's means they're, they're both going to coordinate their search. They're going to find enough my nuts that they share them. My nuts. <laughs> <laughs> we're not, we're we're not being thing. very <laughs> altruistic towards Daryl right thing, now. <laughs> the other thing is that if you're both cooperating, you're both share, spreading the risk amongst yourselves, because what if one of you gets eaten by a badger or something, right? <laughs> Uh, Why are do, badgers always so Do badgers eat squirrels? I don't know. <laughs> badger, 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 mushroom, get, mushroom. Swept up by Ethan Hawke or something. I don't know. So or basically each move... Though, okay, so what's the gets... other choice with the squirrels? Okay, so if... um, Let's say that one of them defects and the other one cooperates. That basically would be... Cooperation basically means I'm going to share the nuts I find with you. I'm going to share my nuts. Okay? <laughs> but the other one says, okay, I'm... I'm going to not share with you, and I'm still going to go out and collect my own nuts anyway. Right? So that basically means that the person who defected is going to wind up with more nuts overall because the person who cooperated decided, all right, I'm sharing my nuts. I'm only getting half <laughs> of the nuts the I find. Can we change the squirrels to gay men? <laughs> <laughs> oh. And instead of nuts, can we say balls? What's the, <laughs> the last time you saw squirrels? They might all be gay. I don't know. I don't know. They're kind of... Uh, well, the term squirrely. I'm and if they, be, and I'm if they both go and they both are like, screw you, I'm going to get my own nuts, then you don't get as many. Exactly. Because they might be foraging in the same areas and they're not if coordinating. If you're both bad, stuff, you right? both get punished. Right. You both get punished. Now, the thing is, you, the advantage, the best choice out of all of them is if you defect and your partner cooperates. That basically means you not only look out for yourself... You also get some of the take from your partner who decided to cooperate with advantage you. Advantage squirrel. That puts you in the best scenario there. However, that kind of advantage is usually not um, easy to perpetuate because over time, someone who chose to cooperate won't continue to be taken advantage so, of. Because there's no altruism, why would they do that? Exactly. So this game is basically sex. Advantage squirrel. Hmm. You either cooperate and do give each other like... Dual pleasure, or whatever, or maybe right. you're gonna defect and you're like, Help okay, each other's nuts. finish me off, and then, <laughs> so I got, I'm only and then go to myself. sleep, and I'm in it for myself. <laughs> yeah. See, I got your four points. You're minus four. I'm minus one. Well, Good night. You know, no, but you if you give a reach around, then defect. that's altruism. See, it's terrible. Then it's cooperation. Yeah. Two. <laughs> but if you both like expect like you're gonna like you do sixty nine and like you don't ah, do see? anything, you both defect. All over all over No, no. If you're both, if it's sixty nine, then you're both doing. And you're Plus both cooperation. minus two. Both yeah. of you get minus two. But if you just turn your head, <laughs> then you're defecting. Right, right, right. And you get a bunch of ear. Uh. <laughs> 
Does anyone want to continue? What this is about? <laughs> so, Daryl. So you're saying that in all in this game, I have a serious question, and I'll try to put a big serious. wall here. <laughs> <laughs> Although I was part of that. Okay, so Daryl, when can we do this game uh, now? That I never we thought my podcast would make me cry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that that's all part of the whole defecting thing too. Yeah. All right. Um, Tears of joy. Defectors. The, <laughs> Sorry about that. Now that we Sorry. know how this goes, would we want to play the game? Now that we know the answer, do it all cooperate, or is it supposed to be for people who don't know that ahead of time to see what they do? All right. So um, there was a competition held where people made simple algorithms that would decide how to progress based on the last move that the opponent made, and these basic programs were pitted against one another and the highest scores were sent through to the next round and the next round was a process of elimination. And eventually there was one um, tactic that actually rose to the top and it was a very simple ta tactic. It was just called tit for tat. It's basically, I'm going to start out by default. <laughs> Say nothing. Go ahead, Daryl. Think of jeans. Because that'll get you away from the breast. Okay, right? I'm, <laughs> you I'm trying to help you. You interrupted yourself. <laughs> you had nothing to do with that. Yep. <laughs> Self-interruption, <laughs> Daryl. Oh. <laughs> so, tit for tat means you're going to start out by default cooperating, okay? Because the best thing that okay. can happen is you have another cooperator, right? And if you keep cooperating, you're going to have the, the best results. Now, the other thing is you Advantage basically badger. tip for tat means that you're going to punish them if they choose to defect. So I cooperate by default. The other the opponent defects, right? So that means the next round I'm going to do what they did. I'm going to defect because I'm basically saying, screw you, you I'm them. going to punish you, right? Yeah. Advantage now, beaver. Now, if they happen to cooperate the next time, I go, oh, oh, okay. And then you stop with the You're beaver. making good again. Now I'm going to mimic you again. Now that you're cooperating, I'm going to cooperate, and hopefully you're cooperating too. Now that that method rose to the top as the best. So, so it was effective. cooperate, defect, that's cooperate, it. defect. No, it wasn't that exact sequence. Was it was just cooperate at first, oh, yeah. then mimic cooperate exactly defect. what the other person does after oh. that point. So they defect, you defect again. Yes. Interesting. Yeah, but that would actually be the less damaging than having you cooperate while they defect. So if they're and that's be, better than the the original right, you so both at least, cooperate, right? At least mitigates the damage. You know, if you keep defecting because they keep defecting, then Who you're, gets to you're choose not first? getting the short end of the stick. Who gets to choose anyway. first? You choose at the same time. Oh. Or you choose blinded. Oh, okay. Where yeah. you don't know the other person. Then how do you mimic them? You mimic their last thing? Yeah. You mimic the That's last thing. That's what he was saying, yeah. Right, right, right. So you always start out by, like, I'm going to cooperate, right? Then what do you do? Cooperate. One. Okay, then I would cooperate the next round. Then what do you do? Defect your ass. Then I would defect the next round. Right? Stop just copying keep, me! Stop copying exactly. me! I just keep copying you. So, um, so now that there is a problem inherent in that, though, is that you can wind up in like a defect lockdown. Because if you pit this right. algorithm against itself, well, first of all, it would just cooperate all the way through. But if you have a little mutation of that, you might wind up with one that just randomly defects some some of the time. And once the defect thing starts happening, as long as it's, if it's set up that, you know, once I start defecting, I'm going to defect perpetually, then this tit for tat method will just keep doing the worst thing. You'll just be like defecting to in a lockdown. Downward spiral. Right? Yeah. So um, to take things a step further, later on, there was a genetic algorithm developed by doing this. So they just started out with a bunch of random formulas about how to react to the other players and pitted them all against one another. And um, then you would take like the strongest two out of that gene pool, right? And then they would mate, and you'd create all the offspring, right? That's Based the on 50-50, okay. the go. genetic code of the algorithm, right? With a little bit of random mutation built in. So it was supposed to you know, mimic genetics. And they went through recursion, recursion, recursion. And what they found out is at the beginning, there were uh, basically the top runners were always in these like defection lockdowns. So it was defection, defection, defection. And then after a time, when the mutations started getting in there, um, every now and then you would find tit for tat starting to get an upper hand. And then those would become the leading ones. And then you would have a bunch of like variations on the tit for tat algorithm going on. And in the long run, the one that would be the strongest strategy would be tit for tat with forgiveness, which means that you're going to mimic what the other person does, but you're leaning toward being forgiving 
part of the time. So sometimes when you defect, I have a certain odds of deciding not to hold it against you. I'll forgive you, and I'll cooperate the next round regardless of you defecting. And that prevents the defect, defect, lockdown from happening all the time. So that um, algorithm, tit for tat, with an element of forgiveness, turn out to be the strongest one. And some people think that this kind of mimics how society uh, builds up. How so? Because we seem to have periods of constant conflict, followed by periods of peace where people, you know, have a justice system that's a little bit like eye for an eye kind of thing but then people also learn how to incorporate forgiveness and we have you know maybe a more pure society but then things break down again and go back into the cycle of once again more conflict yeah, and, that's what, and that's what these algorithms did genetically okay yeah <laughs> Right. So what are we supposed to make of all that? Well, the, one, the first thing I would no, I, think, I think Kale's response was perfect. Okay. 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 <laughs> now that our audience tuned out like 15 minutes ago. Um, the, one, the one thing I would point out about this is that the whole game is kind of engineered to maybe not represent the the world entirely the way it actually is well because when when two people cooperate does that always give you the best benefits and when one person cooperates and the other person doesn't does that always give the advantage to the person who doesn't well, cooperate we have either we're not through a complete cycle but when it comes to debtors Mm -hmm. We they used to have debtors prisons where oh, people I was like were, talking about dead man reverse no. world debtors you know people who owe money a lot of money oh, like us oh all of us I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> that they used to get put in debtors prison <laughs> the zombies was but better. eventually we realized that if it, you put everybody in prison that's what ends up happening yeah. and you don't have anybody producing anything yeah. and so we've we've come up with uh, a system it's where like we can forgive log right what. It's like being sent to the gulag. Yeah, yeah. I don't like gulag. So the forgiveness like bankruptcy? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying is that we've developed oh, that's a good point. bankruptcy, yeah, which is like is, forgiveness. Yeah, is forgiveness. Right. So we're... Yeah. But you still get punished a little bit, like your credit and everything. Right, right. Yeah. There's a little punishment, but the majority of the thing is forgiveness, and it works better for society to forgive that. Well, and I think, I th and I think that uh, society as a whole... risk, too. I think society as a whole, uh, you know... If, well, let's look at altruism. Feels good on the whole. Yeah, so does Preparation Age. But I think the other aspect besides the game not necessarily representing uh, reality completely is also the fact that it's such an isolated thing. It's like the relationship between two people deciding to cooperate or not. But what does that mean in a wider sense? Um, I think that you wind up in the real world with things like ostracism, like, this person never cooperates, and I'm always doing something nice for them. That person is going to be on the outskirts of society eventually because people are tired of being taken advantage of by this person who constantly defects. Right. I think it has it has to do with uh, if we look if we look at altruism in society, altruism, no, not altruism, not true altruism. But the idea of altruism is something that pulls society together because you are working together, you're working for each other. And it's an ideal. And I think the reason that we feel like we are being selfless in when we help society is because we survived because of society. Evolution, those of us who had that feeling that when we help society, we feel better, or we feel like we're doing the right thing, we survived because we're the ones who stayed in society that worked. Those people who are like, I'm not helping society, I'm not going to help these people. Just like Darrell said, they ended up on the outskirts. They didn't have a society to protect them, and they eventually got eaten by a badger. Yeah, they, you need others to survive. No, no, they got they got eaten by a wallaby because they all wound up in Australia. No, well, that's advantage badger. Right? Uh, I have to that say that was not advantage. That's a rule. I'm making a ruling. Advantage badger. <laughs> you, don't, you don't think being killed by a wallaby is kind of funny? All right, never mind. Well, you got to kind of. A lot of people don't know what a wallaby is. Okay. It's a kind of kangaroo. It's, it's a, like a little mini kangaroo. Yeah. But the name is funny, wallaby. Yeah, exactly. Wallaby. Say it a few times. Wallaby. Say it a few times. But wallaby. the, wallaby. the wallaby. broader wallaby. sense of the joke wallaby. was all the outcasts wound up in Australia. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, I see. Because we made that joke several times in the past. We got it. True. It didn't work this time. Okay. <laughs> Fine. This time. It was just a callback. Sorry. So, society. <laughs> altruism. What do you guys say? None of it can be found on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> If they all play the game, 
or does the game play you? The game. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I think you this know, podcast you need, you off the rails. <laughs> yes, oh, always, totally. always. We're not even that hour yet. No, we're but almost need, there. But the thing fine. is, you got need society long, in order to survive, and society needs you in order to succeed. You, the concept of you, like you as one person to be gone, society would be fine. Not as yeah. in a sheep, but not everybody. What? Correct. I thought not you, as in a sheep. No. The you. And you thought my jokes were bad. So, Joey, you were saying something about altruism um, or real altruism keeping society together. Like it's the glue that holds society together. The, well, it doesn't even have to be real altruism. That's what I, actually that's what I meant. It's not. I, I even it's, it's, I meant to say it's not real altruism. It's the concept of altruism. Okay. The concept of being selfless. You think you're being altruistic, whatever it is. Be, I think I think a better word is not altruistic because that's got too much of a philosophy. Philosophy type does it exist, does it not exist. It's really just the idea of being selfless. Looking out for your neighbors, putting yeah. their yeah. needs on par or ahead of your own. Very good. Well it's like giving food to no a matter person what on the corner. The reward is for you. You're being selfless yeah. by giving by giving them food, but you know, you do get a good feeling of helping somebody. But mm-hmm. that's that's not bad. Right. And, and I think that's an excellent self- point. That, that's a good selfish feeling. I think that's a good point. And <laughs> right. I think that's what this comes down to is that even if altruism doesn't exist, because it's not necessarily something we should expect to want. Why would you necessarily want, I'm going to do something and get nothing out of it. Well, why don't you do something and get a good feeling out of it? You're still doing something, you're helping society, you're helping yourself. It's, an, it's a win-win situation. So true altruism, I don't think, is what we should be shooting for anyway. I think that as society, it comes down to what you're saying. You don't have the guy in the game being like, um, I'm going to let you defect and then I'm going to help you. Because that would be altruism, but nobody's really right. going to do that if they want to be part on par and win the game. So what they're going to do is they're going to say, "Let's work together," and that's ultimately for society the best way to go about it. I think another way with selflessness, selflessness too, is doing something something for somebody without realizing you're doing something for them, like opening a door for someone. Yeah, uh, for a stranger. Yeah, you know, it's like yes, I do it for you, but you know, I do it. Well, how, that's, people, how people don't do that. That's a good example. I always like to open the door, especially for women, especially for my wife, because, because, but I, I know what it is, because I feel like they like it, and I know that reflects well on me as a gentleman. And so, right there, it's not really altruism, but it doesn't matter because it's both a win-win situation. And what but I also find, remember, there's a distinction between altruism and duty. You might be looking at it as your duty. I was, I was, about, I was about to nuts, say duty. Okay, Daryl, Daryl, you, you and Badger. I was about to say peace. I was, beaver. I was about to say something has happened that's never happened before, which we got back on the tracks. <laughs> and then Daryl freaking pulls us off with duty. Thanks, Daryl. There's lots so Darryl, of duty. Let's in talk the world. about your duty. What is the duty of somebody? What were you trying to say about duty? What was the real real thing you were trying to say? About duty. Is there corn in it? Is there corn? <laughs> Is that what you were saying? <laughs> if I open a door for a woman, am I expecting it to be my duty for her? Will well, she like I think my duty? That you might be um, putting the, society's expectations of you as, as a like as a dutiful thing to open a door for a woman. Hmm. Not necessarily something that you did. So in that case benefit. she in that case she likes my duty. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay, she's so you that. just feel it's the she right, wants, it's the right she wants thing to do duty every night, and that's good. I mean, I yeah. think it's important for for a man to show a woman in his duty, and show that he has duty. How come we can't use a simple word like duty without it being? <laughs> because, because it's, it's another us. word for poop. <laughs> <laughs> what? No. Are you serious? I think I think that I think that that duty is important. I think you you should be solid with your duty. I think you should. <laughs> I think you should always well, remember I think your you duty. Flush hey, your duty. Don't forget to run when duty calls. But you don't want Whoa. your. <laughs> Would that be like like firemen, you don't policemen, want your... soldiers going into going into battle? But going you would not want your whatever. Run... It's their duty. You wouldn't want your running duty. You would want your duty to be no, something no. that stays around. It's solid. It is is. Sometimes you just got a color card. I would have to duty to against the back seat of a let me get us back on track. Not gonna happen. <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember one of the first pre rambles we ever did? Duty. I went to the uh, skeptics lecture, and it was about that Duty. book, Give and Take. Yeah, I remember. It was yes. about givers and, take. and takers. Oh uh, yeah, we and need. those who give to takers, and those who take from givers. So, Dara, are you the giver or the taker? <laughs> and is there, <laughs> a, du- you is there a duty involved? Or the bottom. Yeah. That's what we were saying before. 
So yes. givers yes. and takers. Givers and takers. Givers and takers. Yeah. So we we made fun of that. So that's a great way to get us back on track. <laughs> I know. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So this is why I was sarcastic about it. Thank so you. yeah. Uh, so what about givers and takers? <laughs> well, it was the givers give the duty, and the takers take. It. to see the author's uh, take on who right. were the most successful because a lot of people thought that people who were maybe at the high end of the success chain were the people who were either complete givers or complete takers. Turns out that you will find a few of those people there, but the vast majority of everybody who's um, at the higher level of success is going to be a mixture. And this is the way that he figured it. He said actually people who are complete givers are generally at the bottom <laughs> rung of success because they're not recognized. It's like if you're if you're working in a cubicle and you're constantly doing and work for other giving people, it and giving it, they're taking credit for everything take you do. <laughs> That's right. And you're sitting there with and you're duty not, all over you. And you're all not over the, the place. Because you're at the bottom. Hey, I've got a question that bottom maybe would pole. actually get us back. What is something that you think you do that is altruistic? Or maybe we say most altruistic. Yeah, most. Closest altruistic. to altruistic. Mm. Yeah, closest. Well, to that's it. a good one. Mm. Uh, I don't know. Mm. Mm. Uh, Guys are altruistic, just women. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a point. <laughs> Mm. Yep. I no. There, I. If, I I'll let you guys thing. think longer because I thought of this, and I. I was thinking about what would be the thing that I do the I most think altruistic. One of, one of the things I could highlight as being pretty altruistic that I used I to Kale's do say. before getting into crypto coin was I would, <laughs> um, you know, use some extra like power crack. and stuff, but I would always keep my computers on to do uh, research for genetics and things like that. I'm going to call. Hmm. I'm gonna call Kale's gonna go drive through. Even SETI stuff. No, no, I'm not doing drive through. I, I, because I always liked that one. I thought that was pretty altruistic. Well, I, I used to do that, but I don't. Right. Even, he would, he would. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, when I could afford sorry, it, I did. Kale and I have this <laughs> private conversation. Nobody understands. Uh, Kale would, person? Kale would pay for the in the drive through, pay for the person behind him, which I thought oh, was cool. Okay. But well, yeah, I used cool. to That's do that randomly. Worked. I tried to pay the for the person in front of me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it never worked. So, what's your altruistic thing, Kale? Well. The thing that I do, when I uh, go shopping anywhere, I always, uh, when I bring the cart out to my car, when I take the cart back to the one of the places where they, you know, you put your cart, I always do another one. I always put somebody else's cart yeah. in there also. This is the first sign that we're digging deep for our altruism. <laughs> Yeah. I put a cart back. So you give electricity no, to people. No, but that's the thing is nobody. You you give a cart to people. Well, it's also like they. Well, get it's there's no way that I'm going to get that too. back. Mm -hmm. That's why I was saying it's altruistic because I'm not right. expecting anybody to. There, you know get what? Back. The, the, there's also a lot of people are OCD and they'll clean things up and f say they're doing it to oh. like make them like they're doing oh, it to be nice, oh, but it's really because they. It's, I've got to be straight. <laughs> right, right. That yeah, that wouldn't be altruism. But it doesn't matter because it's I as long as you're being self. I take in right. stray cats, but that's not altruistic to people. That's just altruistic to someone. Well, no, but that's still honest. kind of altruistic, especially yeah. uh, you know if. Or is it? Because I, I, I enjoy hi. my kitties. Hi there, Linda. Okay, I, I got one. Letting someone who has fewer items than you go in front of you in the grocery store. Okay, yeah, let me one. say I freaking hate that. I do yeah. all the time. I freaking hate that. Let me tell you why. When I've got one item, I never go behind someone with a lot of items because I know they're going to say that. And I don't want to be like, oh, I'll do that. It just makes me feel so uncomfortable. <laughs> like, don't tell me to go in front of you. You got here first. Now you're look, fine. Pat, just go. I like watching you do your items. You know what, though, Joey? Maybe you're just a giver. No, I think no, I have social anxiety, yeah, and I don't. I think that's it. And I don't want people. Where's the self checkout? It's like now <laughs> you're saying no, no. See, it's now you're testing me. Am I gonna go ahead and do what you want me to do, Recent. or can I let you go? Is it a social thing? And then it's when I've got wrong. a whole bunch of items, and someone's behind me, I'm like, should I talk to them? I don't, I don't like it when they talk to me. But if I just sit here and don't let them go, maybe they'll like the read it. Maybe. The reason why I'm ah! buying some ribbed condoms there. Most givers <laughs> don't get ahead because they buy ribbed condoms. Oh my god. No, most givers don't get ahead because they don't ask, right? Like if you're. If you're the, the kind of person that would be in line with a bunch of items and you see someone with one item, you go, oh, go on ahead, but you would never ask someone to do that for you, you're just setting yourself up for failure. You're basically I saying, I'm going to give wants. advantage to everyone else. I was in a big hurry and I said, would you mind if so I go ahead? So that's altruism. 
altruistic, Daryl. That is altruistic, you but you off. wind up what? people you who off? are truly well, altruistic actually, you know, wind up <laughs> unsuccessful. You. Unfortunately. There are no people that are altruistic. Yes. It doesn't exist. Yes. But there are people who are not. But the thing is, no, in the end, I mean, the is, I mean uh, don't get me wrong, though. There are, many, the whole, <laughs> there are many successful Daryl know, altruistic people. <laughs> but the difference with them is that although they're giving, giving, giving all the time, they also know when to ask for help. And that means it's like, oh, hey, buddy. Like you when know, you cramp up. The last like, 10 I'm times I helped you out, so much. I need Would a you help, help me out? <laughs> and you know what? People will reciprocate, and that makes them successful. Well, I, that's like, I, you know. I, but I, people who never ask, no one knows, like, oh, hey, Joey's just given his place in line all the time. <laughs> he okay, never asks for a place in line. He, the, the way you feel about someone doing something altruistic does not reflect that it's not altruistic from them. If I let you in front, your issues are your issues. If you have all the <laughs> I think his issues are his issues. issues. I'm That's still it. being altruistic because I'm not expecting anything in my No, but it makes you feel good, so you're not way being altruistic. Downhill. You are Woo. when you let someone in front of you. No, because it makes you feel good that you're doing that. No, it doesn't. <laughs> wait, 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 you're doing something that doesn't make you feel good? Yeah. Then why are you doing it? Because I'm nice and I'm altruistic. Then it's duty. <laughs> no, because I'm altruistic. Then it's very much. So. No, it is So you're not, not doing it. So you I'm do things. Wait, wait, wait. You do things you don't want to do. Jerry, Jerry, wait, wait. Jerry, Jerry, Why are you doing things? Why are you doing things you don't want to do? Because I'm a nice person. I was taught consideration as a child. Okay, so you're not doing it. Okay, so but you don't want to be nice. You don't want to do these things. Yes. So you're doing something you want to do. Not necessarily at the time. Well, wait, are you doing something you want to do or something no, you don't want to do? it's not something that I think about when I do it. And that's Joey, what I'm saying, but on a subconscious Joey, level. Yes. you're married. Oh, you oh, know sorry. she's right. You, you know what? You're right, Linda. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Sorry, I forgot for a moment. <laughs> you forgot for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot. I understand it discussion. happens to the best of us, yeah. you know. Okay, let's end this now, would please. Would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? You choose one. <laughs> I would rather be, be happy. happy. Whose exactly. choice is it for next week? Oh, uh, that, that would be. God, who would that be? Who's after Daryl? It's either Kale uh, or Paul. That is Kale. <laughs> it's me. Kale, what are we doing next week? Next week. Please let it be duty. Duty? No. <laughs> no duty next week. All right, I'll wait for duty. <laughs> Access to hole. And I will be self what? different kind of space. Black holes. <laughs> I will be holes. selfish. It feels good to get access on the Because what I want to talk about is future global energy so the Ooh. the new new technologies of energy that are coming about so it's like duty's going to be coming up in that one anyway so hey can we can future we also roll battery energy. tech into that that would really make oh fun. yeah sure nice. because that's part of it awesome i think that's I part like of it, it. thermal duty thermal duty <laughs> call, of <laughs> call, of <laughs> call of duty call of duty call of duty you gotta I, answer I kinda of got duty. a little call of duty right now actually <laughs> yeah. I call of duty. okay so I, uh, I can't tell through please, my swamp please send us an email uh, we're, we're, we're swamp assed out so we're gonna end this you know what they say about the portable playstation it's call of duty in your hands oh. <laughs> that was pretty good Daryl I'll give you that one alright uh, right, I'm Joey Schemmel I'm Paul Hunter I'm Kale Anderson and we haven't said where we're at we are at Kale's house. <laughs> oh. I'm Daryl. No. I'm at IamRambling.com. I'm at uh, HayesPaul.com. I'm at, uh, God, now I don't even remember. Romsrants? Yeah, that's it, Romsrants.com. Hey, hey, why don't you tell them where I'm at? Ah, Joris.com, that's G. I orders. G. <laughs> Right. Com. They're going to oh, line yours. up at the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys later. Bye. Thanks for listening. You can now stop screaming at the open air. Listeners should put their minds back in their upright positions and resume traditional thinking. Find us on imrambling.com for access to all of our weekly ramblings, show notes, general discussions, and any projects from Incoherent Ramblings. Like us on Facebook and rate us on iTunes. So long, and thanks for all the fish. sure about this that I bet it's gonna work so get ready to pay it stop Daryl all right okay ready
What's that smell? Dookie. <laughs> Oh, I thought it was Duty. <laughs> no, Duty. Yeah, that was right. Duty. <laughs> it was Duty. Duty Hauser? No, Robocop. Duty. Right. Dookie. Uh, sponsor today. <laughs> oh, dude. Thumbs up, Jesus, I think. Thumbs. Uh, sponsor today is a Tauntaun, I think. Or a... <laughs> Bantha. <laughs> I want you to take that burp you did and put some effects in it and put it in an outtake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so what are we? 28, okay. 28, 29, 30. Wow, Kale. Good job, man. You've been working on your numbers. I've been working on the numbers. Nice job. You know, and Paul's yes. representing Element 1938, the Bronco. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is a pretty high number for the periodic table. Yeah, well, you know. Uh, there's a there's lot, lot of protons. There's a it. lot of coming out. <laughs> yeah, they're adding uh, neutrinos to the thing, so <laughs> yeah. makes a lot of them. We ready? Sure. Five seconds. Ten seconds. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of Brenda <laughs> Incoherent. <Randall. laughs> no, I didn't get ten seconds. All right. <laughs> What's with the false starts, man? <laughs> false start. <laughs> like Joey. we don't do that every time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we all look at Linda. <laughs> she gets blamed again. She gets and then she was for the guinea pig. And she goes like, she's like, no. yeah. Because she doesn't have one of those old IBM clackety clack. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I was kind of thinking, like, what's with her keyboard? It's like, wow, that's really loud for a keyboard. All right, 10 seconds. Here we go. For real this time, Daryl. Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> Shut up.